Yo, what's up, dudes? <laughs> yeah. Burned out on holiday songs yet? Well, hold on, because I got one in the works, so you, you need you got to have room for one more. I uh, try to do one every year, and I've been working on it, and no, it's not that song. Though that was uh, in consideration, but it's not it. So I'm back very quickly. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon, and I'm trying to just do a quick touch-and-go-down video for you Star Trek fans. And uh, got the camera rolling, and I'll probably just throw this right up on YouTube. No editing, no nothing. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, no, uh, what? Anyway, uh, how's it going? I, um, wanted to come back on and say, uh, hello. I'm not gone. Basement flooded last week. We had a big giant rainstorm and, uh, basement flooded. So, you know, that took a while. No one's in the mood to cut videos when the, when the floor is soaking wet. Um, so that, that's over. It's all cleaned out now. That's why the dehumidifier is back out and not the, not the heater. The heater was here for a couple of videos, but now that's gone. Dehumidifier's back. And, uh, you know, it, I got it going pretty good. It's actually really dry now. So the whole place has been dried out. Nothing really gets wet because I am skilled in the art of elevation. So everything gets up off the floor. Now, if my sump pump broke, I'd be screwed. I'm the first one to admit it. It would be a colossal disaster of catastrophic proportions. Uh, and for that reason, I really, really gotta get a a, a a generator i don't know what i'm thinking it's like I, I i gotta get a generator so but i don't have one yet my dad has one and i know he just lives across town i could just drive over there and get his if i absolutely had to so it's probably kept me from buying one but uh yeah uh if i ever lost power i would be in huge trouble i have been down here uh once when the whole place was flooded. I couldn't believe it. I had the sump pump off, and it was about two inches of water. One time, we had, like, crazy, like, eight to ten inches of rain. It was, like, this crazy amount of rain over the course of three days. And after the first couple of days, when we didn't get anything, I said, I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. And I came down, and the, the water was over the first step of the stairs. What's that, a seven-inch riser, I think, in the United States, right? We have a seven-inch riser. So that's at least seven inches, and it was probably another inch. It was like eight inches of water. I nearly plotzed. I was like, what? I forgot to leave the sump pump on. But the sump pump was on. It just couldn't keep up. Couldn't pump out as fast as it was coming in. So I had to go to my dad, who had a, an above-ground swimming pool at the time. This, this, was, this is almost this is like eight years ago. And he had like this before they had moved up into my town. They lived in a town two towns over. And um, they had an above-ground swimming pool, and they had this killer submersible pump to drain the swimming pool, and that thing really cranked. And uh, I got that. Thank God we didn't lose power, or else I would have had like four feet of water down here. And uh, that's when the Ibanez got ruined, right? Remember the Ibanez, all the paint fell off? That was that. So, you know, the floods, uh, what I really need to do is put French drains in. I'm sure I've said that many times. We've checked it out. It's like eight to $10,000 to have that done. And I think the next thing we're going to do is have um, the cement put in the garage. We have a dirt floor in the garage. I have a 25-foot by 25-foot garage. And um, it's a dirt floor. And I think what we're going to do is uh, have that made into a cement floor, concrete floor, and then redo the driveway. That's the next big project. And, you know, this does flood, but it's only like once or twice a year. And nothing really gets ruined. It's more of a, just a, an annoyance than anything at this point. Like I said, if I lost power, then it would be a catastrophe. But for now, I'm okay. Uh, I've switched my camera to 1080p60 instead of 1080p30. Uh, YouTube now is doing the 60 frames per second. Uh, they're encouraging 60 frames a second, apparently. I don't know. But um, I didn't notice really a quality drop-off. It seemed to be about the same. And um, people say that, you know, 
looks a little better for motion. I don't know. I don't. I mean, for gaming channels, sure, but this channel, I don't know. But whatever, for whatever reason, people seem to want it. A couple of people were like, "Whoa, 1080p, 60, sweet." And I was like, "Oh, I didn't even know I did that." <laughs> so, but now I'm making sure that it's on. And what else? Um, I, you know, that's about it. I, I'm still cutting up a few other videos. I got a new video editing machine. Uh, um, I went from an, uh, a 2010 uh, triple core AMD Athlon Phenom 2 with 16 gigs of RAM to uh, an Intel i7, and that had a an AMD 5760, 5780 uh, card in it. Um, the I 5870. Geez, I even forget. But you know, it had a decent, you know, low budget, probably 120, 130 dollar, you know, AMD card. For 2010, right back then. And then uh, now I have a, an Intel i7 and I put a, uh, like a GTX, uh, like a 7, I forget now, 750 Ti, 760, 760 Ti, 750 Ti, I think. And um, it's good. It really does crush that old AMD card, which you would suppose it would be a 2014 card versus a 2010 card. And CUDA cores work a little bit different than uh, OpenCL on AMD. So I think um, Premiere takes a little bit better advantage of it. Um, I've seen some benchmarks where the AMD is scored better, but I think the AMD card they were using was a better card. You know, it just happened to be a, a much faster card than what they were using for the, for the CUDA core. Um, and that's about it. So, cranking out the videos. I'm trying to get on here more and more, but you know how that goes. God. Wait, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I got, I think, I, I went out to Costco today, and I got 90% of my shopping done, so I think I'm good there. There might be room, I mean, uh, I'm not promising anything, but there might be room for one more guitar this year. We'll see. I'm, I'm making no promises. Could happen. Maybe. Uh, and one other thing, um, uh, someone had asked me about strings and restringing. And uh, I recently signed up for Amazon has a thing. See, I'm an Amazon Prime guy, so I get free shipping and all that. So, you know, that, that probably makes it, uh, you know, a lot more worth my while than maybe other people have to pay the shipping. But uh, I order my strings now through Amazon. They carry the brand I like. And they have, I use a combination of 9s and 10s. It depends on the guitar. Most of my Floyd Rose guitars, I use 9s. And most of my stop tailpiece guitars, I use 10s. Long story. We'll get into that someday. But um, you'll pay for that pack of strings. Like I think the retail is like three seventy nine. Of course, if you went to like some local place, you could pay $4.50 for it. You know, they, they gouge you. Um, but 379 is what I see out there. But, you know, if you buy them in bulk, you can get them as low as like for a 10 pack, as low as like $25 for a 10 pack. I think I was paying like $32 for a 12 pack or something like that. It gets down to about $2 and 50 cents a pack somewhere around there. But if you go with the Amazon subscription system and you, you can set the subscription between every month, every two months, every three months, up to six months, Every six months, you get an order. It could be one set of strings, right? Um, oh, actually, I don't know if you can get one set. I get the three-pack, right? They come three sets in one box. So I get a three-pack of nines and a three-pack of tens sent to me every month. And I pay, I think it's um, like $6.86 a pack. It works out to uh, $2.12 a pack of strings. That's about as cheap as it gets. That's cheaper than any place I've ever seen. And I get free shipping because I'm an Amazon Prime member, so you might pay more. But I don't have a link to it or anything. I don't make any money off of this. I just thought it was kind of a cool program. Uh, you know, you could have it sent to you like every other month. And what it does is it just sort of kicks you in the butt to change your strings. Now, I'm, I can be really bad about that. It can have strings on my guitars very long time and they just lose their tone i mean you might get a month out of a set of strings but really you probably only get like a week or two <laughs> and then they really start to lose their tone but you know some people like that they like that more like they don't like the bright sound you get from a new set of strings so sometimes they will uh they prefer the duller sound you know and that's 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 just a personal preference 
Um, but I, uh, I I like the 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 newer strings. I like the brightness from the new set, and uh, I find that they just they they stay in tune a little bit better. And I, I don't know if I'm alone in this. I can feel it now, just a hair. Uh, I will press down on the string so hard that I will create many little humps at the fret lines on the strings. And if I lightly move my fingers down the strings, I can feel bumps on the top side from pressing on the bottom. And that can't be good for the tonal quality and the intonation on the string and on the bottoms. And I'll have to find a set and take them off. I wear those flat. I mean, sometimes I'll break the winding. I'll wear down to the bare winding. And uh, then I'm like, all right, I'll change the strings. You don't want to go too crazy with that because you can really hurt your frets. Right? You have to be careful. But um, I'm pretty bad about changing the strings because I have so many guitars. I I'm more likely to change guitars than to change strings. It's like, oh, I need something new. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that starts. So I love this Amazon program. Uh, I pay like $12 or $13 a month and I get... For like thirteen dollars a month, I get six sets of strings, and it's pretty good. Three sets of tens and three sets of nines. Diadario XLs, just you know, the brand I like, and they and they work. They, you know, they're great. So um, uh, if you know if you if you need strings on a regular basis, check them out. You know, get check out the subscription program. I don't know if like Ernie Ball, oh, you know what strings are under the subscription program and what strings aren't and of course they could always change what i pay for them i don't know if the price changes every month i don't know if i'm locked into that price i really don't know this is, i've only had it for one month but it's like my version of like nerd block which i get my kid i get my kid uh, arcade block and i think a one-up box and uh they love it and i'm like daddy needs one of those except i know what it is every month it's uh, you know a, a six pack of strings works for me all right, guys, that's it. I will be back very soon. Uh, my schedule just finally started clearing out, and uh, I'm hoping to get some more time at the new machine. The new machine's done. I mean, between the flood, the switching around the machines, and a whole bunch of other crap, it's just been hard to get on here. But, um, you know... All right, guys, that's it. I better get this chugging up to, to the internet. <laughs> so uh, so I, I think one of the videos I'm going to do is I'll do a, res a retrospective. We'll do a guitar retrospective for 2014, and we'll just look back. We'll we'll check out the, the state of the channel, <laughs> and we'll figure out uh, where we've been and where we're going. All right, guys, until then, as always... Rock on.